Welcome to another Digital IRQ tutorial. This tutorial is actually going to be more of a comparison than it is a straight up tutorial. We're going to compare the Photoshop Lens Flare versus Null Light Factory. A lot of people have asked, well, Photoshop has a lens flare. Why do we need another filter that creates lens flares? The problem with the Photoshop Lens Flare filter, and we'll bring it up, is that it's incredibly limited. There really are only four presets and you really can't do much except adjust the brightness for them. So here we'll take a look at our lens flare window. So you can see the Photoshop lens flare, which has been overused in a bazillion different ways, all pretty much badly. There is really no good way of using the Photoshop lens flare. Mostly because there are only three different presets that I think are really functional. The movie Prime kind of creates these lines which I think is more of a bug than it is the actual effect. So you end up with these three different presets. Since everybody has them that's had Photoshop since the dawn of time, practically everyone has used them in some form or fashion and probably not done so very well. Since it's one of those filters that you open up when you first get Photoshop, apply it once or twice to some sort of image, and then promptly forget about it because it's mostly useless. Above and beyond the fact that there's really only three workable presets is the fact that you can't resize the window, I can't zoom into the image here for exact placement, and the only adjustment that I can make to this is the brightness. So I can either have this kind of funky red ring lens flare, or I can have a nuclear explosion one of the two. There's really not a whole lot in between. And in truth, I don't think I've ever seen a picture that actually has a lens flare that looks like this. Since the 35mm prime is essentially the same as the 50 to 300, really you only have two presets. You have the 50 to 300 versus and the 35, and then you have the 105mm prime, which does give you a little bit different look and actually looks halfway decent. And so this is kind of usable. So really with the Photoshop Lens Flare you have one truly usable preset, a couple other presets, and really no way to make any adjustments between Lens Flare and Nuclear Explosion. So now let's take this and compare it versus Null Light Factory. So we're going to cancel out of the blazing sun of death here and go to No Light Factory. Go down to Digital Anarchy and open up No Light Factory. And this partially appears off the screen. So the first thing you notice about this is there's a lot more to it. One of the cool things is we can resize this or resize the window. We can zoom in on our image Let's move our flare around here a little bit. And we'll come in and say zoom to fit. And zoom in. And keep zooming in until we're close enough that we can properly place the lens flare. That should do it. This makes it much easier to exactly pl place stuff and kind of get exactly the look you're looking for. And you'll notice that instead of three different presets, we have well over a hundred with many different types of looks. And so you can get anything from a uh, arc welder to a warm sun to a laser beam and many other things. And so, for example, if we grab our Digicam Sun preset here, see this is a pretty nice uh, sunshine preset, and we're going to stick this right in the archway here. And this is pretty si similar to another tutorial, and we're not really going to go over that. But as you can see, you've got, you can resize the window, you can zoom in, you've got a lot more control over the look of the flare. You don't just have brightness. We've got scale, which does something a little bit different. And then we have all this stuff over on the side. 
And what this is, is all the elements that make up this lens flare. So if we start turning things off, you can see elements of this starting to disappear. And we can even remove stuff like the glow ball. And, and now we can take something like the stripe and actually make some adjustments to it. So we can adjust the angle. We can increase the length of it. And we can turn this star filter on again. Give us a little bit more to work with. And we can even add in different elements. You've got 17 different artifacts that occur when light hits a camera lens. And in this case, we'll add sparkle just to add a little bit of sparkle to it. And whether this is realistic or not is kind of beside the point. We're just showing you some of the cool ways that this differs from the Photoshop lens flare. And we can now increase the brightness of this or turn it down a little bit. So you can see the nice thing about No Light Factory is it just gives you a lot of different options, a lot of different presets, and just a lot of different ways of creating different types of lighting effects. You're not limited to the same standard three preset lens flares that everybody else in Photoshop has. You've now got ways to create realistic or fantastical or anything that you want as far as lighting effects go with all these different elements, all the different parameters for each element, and then the overall master controls, it just gives you a lot of flexibility in adding or enhancing light to your images. And after you've played around with it for a little while and created some of your own lights, I think you'll see what I mean by that. So definitely download the demo and start playing around with it and go through some of our tutorials on how to get the most out of it. And I look forward to seeing you in those tutorials.